From the late 90s to late 2000s, the psychological genre was at an all-time high. Series like Serial Experiments Lane, Neon Genesis Evangelion, Techno Lies, Ergo Proxy, and a plethora of other anime slash manga all managed to gain substantial amounts of notoriety under this genre. This genre is known for having creamy atmospheres and bone-chilling effects, along with seemingly random appearances of, well, anything. And that was the beauty behind the psychological genre. Even if all these random appearances didn't make sense in the moment, they all eventually tied together, piecing apart a story that could be interpreted in more ways than one. The story was up to you to decide what your interpretation of it was. The psychological genre allowed authors to be creative, to express what they wanted to express to the fullest, and authors like Chiaki J. Konica and Hideaki Anno did just that. After the late 2000s, the world began seeing a decline in this previously loved genre. Did people grow out of it? Was it just not selling well anymore? All of these could be plausible answers, but the big one we can all mutually agree on was the advancement of technology and anime along with manga as a whole. Psychological anime and manga prioritized having a low quality type of atmosphere, a very simplistic environment to suit the exaggerated scenarios accompanying this genre. Part of the beauty behind psychological anime along with manga was the simplistic feel that it had, but without a doubt, the advancement of technology drew many away from this genre. Another irrefutable fact on why this genre died out is without a doubt because of the shift within interest. These days, everyone is more so drawn to bubbly art styles accompanied by cute characters and lighthearted topics things that can be used as escapism. Despite Oyasumi Poon Poon still falling within that late 2000s range, it still managed to be a popular resurfacing topic even of today. So let's talk about it. Oyasumi Poon Poon is without a doubt a strange one. From the very first chapter, the saturated manga colors are easily noticeable, making the world seem almost dead and uninhabited in a way. We also see this seemingly random bird along with these constant over-the-top faces. It's a lot to take in for our first page, and it certainly doesn't get any more coherent as the story develops. When we're first introduced to Poon Poon, the bird portrayed main character, he's almost like a fresh canvas, a clean slate. He knows very little, yet is exposed to all these subtle horrors that cause him to progressively grow for better or for worse. As the world of Oyasumi Poon Poon grows more mysterious with each chapter, so does it also grow more grotesque in suit. The more Poon Poon is exposed to, the more he becomes corrupted as a person. The more his world grows and expands, the more he's left behind as a person. We watch Poon Poon go through all these terrible things and time and time again try to bring himself up only for that to come crumbling down. Poon Poon is the epitome of unfortunate and most series of today would never even consider having a main character such as him. And this is the glory behind Oyasumi Poon Poon. In chapter 91, Oyasumi Poon Poon uses an illusion to elaborate on the story from an outside perspective and give us an idea of what exactly the story is supposed to be about or a message without directly speaking about the story. A character named Nanjo Sachi, who we'd been introduced to for quite some time, is an aspiring mangaka, or rather, a writer, or an author. All of these words suit her. When Nanjo Sachi goes to submit her manga with Poon Poon, she's met with an immediate rejection. Her publisher believes that the story is too dark, and that's not what the majority want to see. People want something positive to read, something that can be used as escapism. When publishing manga, this is a common thing to hear. Series that involve darker atmospheres such as this one are harder to get serialized due to the drastic shift in genre popularity. Why haven't we had another hit following Serial Experiments Lane or Neon Genesis or Ergo Proxy? People have little by little grown out of this genre, and what Sachi's producer is saying is completely correct. Nanjo Sachi to this rejection says that she wants to draw a story from the perspective of an average person. She wants to dictate real-world struggles that other works tend to avoid, and that she wants to challenge the standards of modern work and etch her name into the world. Sound familiar? This is exactly what Oyasumi Poon Poon has done, and what Oyasumi Poon Poon has strived to do since the start. For example, whereas characters in other works may appear as beautiful or pretty, or maybe even just semi-good looking, the majority of characters in Oyasumi Poon Poon appear as disturbing oftentimes and even kind of creepy. And while main characters in other shows mostly appear talkative and expressive, Poon Poon is quiet, 
we've never even seen dialogue come from him. It's only through the use of a narrator that we're able to understand him and his actions. Oyasumi Poon Poon challenged the standards of manga and did the complete opposite of other manga. This is a manga that's not meant to be used as escapism. If anything, it's more so used to ground you in the harsh reality instead. Oyasumi Poon Poon may have many descriptive meanings that will differ from interpretation to interpretation, but the general point of this series is to challenge what was and still is considered the normal in the anime slash manga scene. This even goes beyond just anime and manga. It shows a realistic yet exaggerated struggle of a poorly developed average boy who lives with the trauma of his first love, who lives with the trauma of constantly being used then tossed aside. The core reason why Oyasumi Poon Poon still resonates with the people of today as much as it did 17 years ago is because people can truly relate to this story even now more than ever. With the introduction of COVID, companies, businesses, society as a whole was at an all-time low. Poon Poon, a wandering child with no set path, who constantly faced struggles of family issues, financial issues, relationship issues, became a source of relatability to people. People during this period of time didn't want to enter the world of escapism anymore. They wanted something to indulge in and relate to, and people found that within Oyasumi Poon Poon once again, all these years later. Aside from the relatability that people found, people were also attracted to the abstract art style and randomness that the series captured. That was one thing that had never changed. People had always been fond of this abstractness. It just showed how creative a show could really become. And without a doubt, Oyasumi Poon Poon is much more versatile than the manga we get of even today. Well, it's more versatile than the majority. In my opinion, a lot of the prior anime of the psychological genre was considerably more versatile than some of the works we've received today. While psychology in anime and manga is an aspect gradually being lost to time, I also feel as if creativity within series inside and outside of psychology are being lost to time as well. That's practically the reason why I can talk about such a grotesque manga with such favorable words. Creativity is something that I appreciate whether it's within the genre of psychology or not and, believe it or not, it's something we really don't see much of anymore. And that's why, to be honest, reading Oyasumi Poon Poon was like a breath of fresh air. Today, a lot of the anime and manga we get are frankly just copies of each other, and it does get exhausting. But before we had all these copies, we had series like Oyasumi Poon Poon bringing something new to the table which we had never seen before, and that creativity is what stands out about this manga. People pushing the limits of their creativity to dictate a story about depression, discovering self-identity, real world troubles. Things that stray away from the modern escapism. For that, I can respect this series. Although, if you do intend to read this manga, it's only fair that I warn you, this series covers a lot of sensitive topics and is more catered towards an older audience. If you want to read it, I won't stop you, but just be aware of what you're getting yourself into. How do you guys feel about the genre of psychology, and how do you guys also feel about Oyasumi Poon Poon if you've read it? I'd really like to know. Thank you all for watching this video about a manga I picked up recently. Uh, it really means a lot if you made it all the way to the end. I'll see you guys later in something more lighthearted, maybe. Who are you? Excuse me, who are you?